Hello, I'm Dwayne. And I'm Lance. And we'd like to welcome you to another episode of TKS, A True Knowledge of Self, where we get to know ourselves from a biblical perspective. Now, we're going to have a very exciting uh, discussion right now, and we're going to be kind of contrasting true knowledge of self versus this idea in hip hop culture of knowledge of self. And so we're going to kind of look at what we refer to as the great controversy theme and our desperate need to know ourselves as God had originally intended. And then we're going to contrast that and look at this false concept of knowledge of self as presented by hip hop culture. So Dwayne, uh, when we think about these things, why is knowledge of self so important anyway? Well, I think the best way to approach it would be to look at it from a biblical perspective because that's the emphasis of our program anyhow. And if you were to consider even creation, when God made not only the heavens and the earth, but he made the angels, the Bible says something very specific that we would do well to consider. It says in Colossians chapter 1, and it's in uh, verse 16, speaking about Jesus, it says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, angels were even made by God, but also for God yeah. to glorify him, to honor him, to worship him. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible makes it clear that there was an angel by the name of Lucifer and that angel, or in fact, he was of course, Lucifer, the light bearer, yeah. but eventually he became known as another being. And Lucifer, the light bearer, was made by God to glorify God. Mm -hmm. Yet, Lucifer, according to the testimony of Scripture, lost a knowledge of himself. Mm -hmm. And the reason we know that is because when you get to Isaiah, the 14th chapter, All the right. Bible says something about the condition of Lucifer, something that happened to him. Okay. And it says in verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Mm -hmm. It was when Lucifer lost a knowledge of himself, where his position was, why he was created, his purpose in creation, that he actually thought that he could supersede the creator himself. I see. He lost the knowledge of himself. And as a result of that, he exalted himself. And the Bible says as a result of this, a war started in heaven. Well, the problem is, is that though the war started in heaven, it landed on earth, according mm -hmm. to Revelation 12 and verse 12. All right. So because of this fact, Satan has waged war still against God, but he's using humanity as the medium. He's using us as the means to hurt God now. So when humanity fell into the sin trap, then something happened to us. We uh, Literally, it was as if our DNA changed. Mm -hmm. And so we were created in the image of God and his likeness, but now we were made in the likeness of man. And along with that was a sin full nature. All right. Well, the Bible speaks about this in Jeremiah 17, 9, and it says that the heart, doc, talking about the condition of man, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Hmm. This is the true condition of man. This is what man needs right now. They need a true knowledge of self to understand that naturally I am wicked. I am anti-Christ. I am against God and I'm certainly not godly. And this is why a true knowledge of self is important so that we can understand we have fallen. We have a fallen nature and we need help. So man can't be trusted on his own. He cannot be trusted on his own. He can't trust anything of an, in and of himself. So if man can't be trusted, then what was the original plan? In other words, what, what had God originally designed and intended? That's an excellent question. I mean, if you go way back to the beginning of time, mm -hmm. in Genesis 1 and verse 26, the Bible tells us very clear God's intent and purpose when he made mankind. The Bible says God made man in his image and in his likeness. Man was called to reflect the image of God. He was called to reflect the character of God. And this was supposed to be brought forth all throughout the planet Earth and throughout all of the creation that would come through the Earth. And man was to have dominion over the creatures of the Earth. So God had a beautiful plan that was in the beginning. He was able to create man to reflect his image. But the problem is, is that when man fell into sin, as I stated, it caused a shift. Mm. An example, if we were to look at Genesis 5, this is often because, you know, I remember a time I used to tell people this to say, don't you know that you were created in the image of God? Yeah. And you know, you would say that to people, but if the truth be told, 
we were created in the image of God, but something happened in history that caused man to lose much of that image. And as a result of that, something else took place. It's in Genesis, the fifth chapter. It says right there in verses one to three, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Once man fell into sin, it was as if a literal DNA change took place. Yeah. So we were no longer just directly and most emphatically reflecting the image and likeness of God. Now we're reflecting the image and likeness of Adam with a fallen nature. And therefore we need help. This was not God's original plan. Mm. When God made us in his image, he wanted us to reflect that image. And in Psalms 104 verses one and two, the Bible says something beautiful. It says that God covers himself with light as with a garment. God actually, when he made man, he wanted us to be light bearers. Mm. He wanted us to be the ones to spread his light of love, hope, and righteousness all throughout the world. That was his original plan. So when God made man in his image, if God covers himself with light, then man was also to be covered with light. Right. Now there's a very specific function of light. In Ephesians 5 and verse 13, the Bible says, whatsoever makes manifest is light. In other words, that's the purpose of light. Light is designed to make something manifest, to make something known. So when God made man in his image and his likeness, he covered man with the same light that he had upon himself, and he wanted man to reflect that light all throughout the world to make something known. The question is what? Mm -hmm. What was it that God wanted man to make known all throughout the world? Yeah. It's found in the book of Micah, chapter 7 and verse 9. In Micah 7 and verse 9, it says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. And then it says, and then he will plead my cause before me and present judgment. And then it goes on to tell us, he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Right, righteousness. There you go. So the light, the light that God wanted to be emanated throughout the world was none other than the light of his righteousness. God covers himself with light as with a garment. God covers himself with righteousness as a garment. When God made man, he covered man with light. He covered man with righteousness as a garment. And God wanted that righteousness to shine all throughout planet Earth. So and this was God's plan in the beginning for man. So God wanted to give man what he had. That's right. Man was made in his image. Then what happened? I mean, basically, we're, we're in a situation where we looked at uh, Jeremiah 17, 9, mm -hmm. and we see that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. We see the corruption now that we're facing and this deception, if you will, that we know ourselves when we really don't because we don't understand God's original plan. That's right. So what happened? Why the change? What happened? Well. If you go back to Genesis 3, the Bible speaks on this because what you see happening in Genesis 3, you can literally see happening in our, in our society today. I mean, it is absolutely parallel. When God made Adam and Eve, you'll remember in Genesis 2, actually. I'll go there first. Yeah. In Genesis 2.25, it says something pretty powerful. It says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now, I don't know if people understand this, but this is actually a very strange statement when it comes to scripture, mm -hmm. because for someone to be naked and not ashamed is not normal. Right. You know, in our day and age today, you know, if you're naked, that's a shameful thing. And even in the Bible, when the Bible talked about those who are inflicted with the disease of Laodicea, it says in Revelation 3.18, when it talks about the beautiful natural remedies of God, it talks about, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Uh -huh. So shame and nakedness normally go together. But here, before sin touched this planet, it literally says that man was naked and not ashamed. He had a covering, yep. and we just found out what the covering was. It was God's light, because remember, God covers himself like a garment. Man was covered with light like a garment. That light was God's righteousness. But when man chose to sin, we got to pay attention to the text. All right. In Genesis 3 now, it says right there in verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Verse 7 is key. 
and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So here it is that the Bible is literally showing that in the beginning of time, man, when he was in right standing with God, he could be naked before God and not ashamed because he has the right covering. Mm. It's kind of like you and I, we're, we're on a televised program right, right, right now. And if the truth be told, we are both naked but we're not ashamed of it because we have a covering called clothing. The clothing covers our nakedness. It's the same principle. Adam and Eve, they were naked, but they were not ashamed because they had a covering. It was God's righteousness. When they fell into sin, they lost the covering. Hmm. That's why the Bible's saying now their eyes are open. They lost the covering. They lost God's righteousness. Sin can remove God's righteousness. Yep. And as a result of this, now Adam and Eve, they see their nakedness, but they do something that was absolutely unwise. And humanity today is doing something that is absolutely unwise. Adam tried to cover himself. All right. He made something called aprons. These aprons were obviously insufficient in covering his nakedness because even after he made it and put it on, what does it say in verse 10 of Genesis 3? It says in verse 10 of Genesis 3, after God was calling for Adam and looking for him, it says, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Even when Adam and Eve had on a new garment, if you will, it was still not sufficient because God later on in verse 21 of Genesis 3 had to make a new clothing for them. Yeah. It says, unto Adam and also to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them all over again. The apron was insufficient. Now, if the first garment Adam and Eve had was a garment of righteousness, then when they made this second garment that they were trying to cover themselves with, this is obviously a garment that is demonstrative of self-righteousness. Self-righteousness. Man trying to cover his own nakedness mm. in and of his own merits. Mm. And this is something that obviously is unacceptable with God. Mm -hmm. God cannot accept it. And a true knowledge of self helps me, helps you, helps everyone to understand in and of myself, there's nothing I can do or ever will do that can make me righteous with God. Righteousness starts with God. Righteousness is maintained with God and righteousness finishes with God. So what we're looking at is a situation where true knowledge of self, the object is God. That's right. Everything originates from him and everything that we have comes from him and everything that we have, we owe to him. That's right knowledge of self as is presented in hip-hop culture, and we'll be talking about that you know, more later on in, in future episodes, but knowledge of self in an earthly sense is self, you know, we become the object. That's right. So we become the dictators, we become the, the origins of truth and what righteousness is, and it's extremely deceptive as we looked at in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So now, that we, we're talking about this righteousness and, and what God is, is presenting and what the, the Bible is presenting, what is righteousness? Well, as we prepare to go ahead and answer that question, I want us to consider this. Mm -hmm. If we were to try to take these little points of scripture that we put together thus far, the plan of salvation that the Bible presents is a plan where God is seeking to help man put his clothes back on. All right. You know, if I could put it in real layman's terms, that this is what God is doing right now. He's on a mission to help man get his clothes back on because man started with the right clothing, but man unfortunately is wearing the wrong clothing today. Mm -hmm. And that wrong clothing is what we can simply term Adam's apron. Mm -hmm. Anytime an individual tries to make themselves righteous or in right standing with God because of some deed that they do, or because of some concept that they conjecture or anything like that, mm -hmm. these are all various forms of self-righteousness. I can make myself in right standing with God and man, independent of God, independent of his word, independent of his ways. Mm -hmm. All of this represents Adam's apron. God's plan is to get that apron off of us and to clothe us. He wants to reclothe us with his righteousness. So when we think about what really is righteousness, it is something that man cannot answer himself. God has to answer that question. Right. And, and it requires a spirit spirit and mind of humility that one can be able to say, all right, I don't have the answers. God has the answers. And it causes me to submit and surrender my thoughts and my processes and let God's will be done. Because Proverbs 14, 12 tells us clear as day, there is a way that seems right unto a man. Yeah. I can take the word right and put righteous there. There is a way that seems righteous unto a man. 
but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. And the Bible didn't say it once, it said it twice. Proverbs 14, 12, there's a way that seems right unto a man, the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 16, 25, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Mm -hmm. God literally had to repeat himself to try to get us to understand, I know what I'm talking about and I mean what I say. So true knowledge of self is really, we're really talking about total dependence. That's right. Whereas, whereas the self-righteousness and this, this, this worldly knowledge of self is really this independence. That's correct. And so we, we have to not uh, be afraid of total dependence on God and all of his ways and all of his word and all of his righteousness. Mm -hmm. So again, we need to understand what his righteousness is. So, you know, break that down. Absolutely. Now, if we go to Psalms 119, Jesus said a statement a long time ago that I believe is still relevant to the people of God today. In Psalms 119, 172, the Bible tells us clear as day, what is righteousness? Mm -hmm. And this is imperative for anybody who really wants true righteousness, but you have to have a true knowledge of self to yeah. see your need for righteousness. Yeah. All right. So in Psalm 119, 172, the Bible clearly says, my tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are righteousness. So when we think about what is righteousness, it's not enough to say right doing. And the reason why is because who says what you're doing is right. Exactly. A man can literally walk up to another man, take a gun and kill him and say what I did was right. I had to do it. A person can go to a store, steal food, and say, I did what I did was right. I had to do it. People can rationalize, and that's the world we live in right now. People can rationalize almost every wicked deed. We are living in a time of Isaiah 5 and verse 20. Woe unto those who call good evil and evil good. Yeah. Today, there's evil things that's happening and people have the nerve to call it good. There are things that good things are happening and people have the nerve to call it evil. Our minds are exceptionally frail. And again, when we have a true knowledge of self, we understand I can't even determine what's right or wrong. Right. So we have to let God do it. And when God does it through his word, he says, all my commandments, all my commandments are righteousness. righteousness. So when I think of what is righteousness, I can sum it up in God's commandments, specifically these 10 commandments. This is why Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14 makes it blazingly clear. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Yeah. So God wants to make it clear. Listen, my understanding, my concept of righteousness is encased in these blessed principles that we call the Ten Commandments that has been given unto man that is our whole entire duty to follow. If we follow these principles, we would find ourselves in a much better position than we see ourselves in today. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, the commandments of God uh, now clearly defined as his, his righteousness or our righteousness, then the commandments of God are ultimately a reflection of his character. That is correct. Think about it. When you go to the book of Romans, the seventh chapter, the Bible says in Romans seven, right there in verse seven, Paul makes it clear. I'd like to read it. In fact, I think okay. it's, it's, it's important to look at it. We'll look at Romans seven, seven, and then Romans seven, 12. Okay. In Romans seven, seven, the Bible says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. And then when you go down to verse 12, it says, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Mm. Now, literally each phase of what the Bible just called God's commandments is literally, a, as you said, a, de a definition or an inscription of his character. Yeah. God is just, Deuteronomy 32, 4. God is good, Matthew 19, 17. God is just, Deuteronomy 32 again, and James 2 as well. So God is just, God is good, God is holy, 1 Peter 1, 15, 16. So if God is all of these things, or since God is all these things, and the commandments are all these things, clearly the Ten Commandments are therefore a transcript of God's character, which it was Adam and Eve's job to bear, to shine all throughout the world. And so now, if that's very clear, so God's character and his commandments are essentially one and the same, and his righteousness is, is essentially one and the same. So if God's character is holy and just and good and his commandments are holy and just and good, then righteousness is holy and just and good. And therefore a, a human being cannot produce inherently righteousness and justice and holiness and goodness. So that's, that's the ultimate question is, can we make ourselves righteous? Well, the truth of the matter is, is that we can't. 
In fact, when you look at Romans 3, right? If you look at Romans, the third chapter, you will notice in the 10th verse, it says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Mm. The Bible says in verse 23 that all have sinned, all have fallen into unrighteousness, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I remember this growing up in hip hop culture. I was I was somebody who was taught that I am a God. Yep. I was taught that there are lots of things that I can do that is godly yep. and a demonstration of a godlike character. Yep. But when I compare it to God's law, especially magnified, I saw incredible contradiction. God's law says thou shalt not commit adultery, which means be loyal, remain faithful. Mm -hmm. And here it is that in hip hop culture that as I experienced it, I was told that having sex with somebody that's not my wife is perfectly all right. Yep. In fact, that's demonstrated in hip hop culture today. The biggest names in hip hop today, all of them advocate fornication. Yeah. First Thessalonians chapter four and verse three is a clear text. It says very clearly, this is the will of God, even your sanctification that you might flee Please. fornication. Yeah. But yet in hip hop culture, it is often made known that it's all right to fornicate. You don't have to be married to one person and commit your life to them all your life, etc. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and as long as you care about the person and don't, once you can make up your own rules and close the book. Yeah then we're like the people in the book of Judges. Everybody does what's right in their own eyes. But uh, the problem is there's not a true knowledge of self. Our hearts are deceitful. We can't trust ourselves. We are bent on making the wrong decisions over and over and over again. And I believe almost anyone that takes a faithful look at their own lives can see the truth of the Bible in their own reality. Yep. Making decisions, you look back at it and you say, man, I wish I never made that decision. I really deceived myself. Right. Well, the Bible already told us that. A true knowledge of self helps me see how messed up I am, that I can go to someone who's not messed up, that he can clean me up. Right. But if I'm stuck in the quote unquote knowledge of self that I am God and I'm the supreme being and I'm the one that has the, has the, the knowledge, wisdom and the so-called overstanding, then I'm not going to go ahead and go to this one and only God and submit myself to him and let not my will but his be done, even if it means I must be faithful unto death. Right. I'm not going to let those things be a reality for me. Right. So this is the deception of knowledge of self in comparison to the reality and the truth of true knowledge of self. So we can't get our own righteousness. Uh, we need to get it from God. So the question, the next question is, how do we get it? How do we get it? Well, let's consider what the Bible says. If we were to look right back at Romans three, just consider verse 22. Mm -hmm. I think it's very clear in Romans, the third chapter in the 22nd verse, how then do we get righteousness considering that we need it? It was God's original plan. We fell from it. We've tried to establish our own. We have failed miserably. Yes. And now we are at a point where we're saying, Lord, okay, how then do I get what you want me to get? The Bible says in Romans three and verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So the Bible makes it clear that righteousness can come to a man today, but it can only come by faith. And it has to come by faith of Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is why Christianity is the solution. Um, we know that there are perversions to Christianity. I mean, I'm a black man and there are people who literally will say that there are things that are quote unquote black that I can look back and say, excuse me, I'm not like that. Right. You know, there, there are things that we're told a way a person talks, dresses, acts, and they'll say, oh, he's talking or dressing or acting like a black man. I'm like, excuse me, I'm a black man and I don't talk, dress or act like that. So mm -hmm. I find that to be disrespectful. Mm -hmm. In fact, insulting. Well, there's a lot of disrespect and insult given to Christianity. You often hear the story, even told many a times through hip hop culture. It was the Christians that enslaved the Africans and et cetera. Yeah. I can guarantee you those people were not Christians. Yes. You know, they were putting up a front. They were a bunch of actors, yeah. but they were not Christians. Yeah. True biblical Christianity is the solution on how mankind can receive righteousness, but it's only going to come by faith in that man mm -hmm. named Jesus Christ. All right. So essentially, and we're, we're kind of unwrapping some, some deeper layers here, essentially, then the gospel or, or Jesus Christ is the central theme. This idea of salvation is the central theme of the Bible, the central theme of everything. That's correct. Um, I love a statement that I read in the book Education. Okay. In the book Education, it was on page 125 that it made a very profound statement. I'm going to read it. Okay. It states, the central theme of the Bible, mm -hmm. the theme about which every other in the whole book clusters is the redemption plan. Mm -hmm. 
the restoration in the human soul of the image of God. From the first intimation of hope in the sentence pronounced in Eden to that last glorious promise of the revelation, they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. The burden of every book and every passage of the Bible is the unfolding of this wondrous theme. Man's uplifting the power of God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So this is the theme of the Bible. This is the emphasis of scripture. This is why our Lord Jesus has admonished us. Don't live by bread alone, but live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So since this is the goal, um, it was imperative that God would then create a lifestyle a way to live so that we aren't simply left with all of these, you know, precious truths and this reality that's presented to us. And then all of a sudden we just got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we walk, talk, eat, dress, because it is important. So, you know, by definition, when we talk about culture, mm -hmm. it's essentially how humans live. That's you right. know, everything that they do is part of culture. So God is going to then give a culture. He's mm -hmm. not going to just leave us uh, culture lists. That's right. So we're not coming into a situation where we're saying uh, culture is not important. Culture is, is essential and is vitally important, but culture is dictated and it's a reality that was given us by God himself. That's correct. So we're going to be talking about this culture of Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be moving forward and contrasting that with the, cult the hip hop culture. That's right. Uh, because we have to realize and we have to understand that um, just because it's rich and it's cultured and it's powerful and it affects people and it changes lives doesn't mean it's right. That's right. And that's what we have to be able to differentiate. God has given a superior culture and we have to acknowledge that. So when we come uh, back in our next episode, we're going to be talking about more of this knowledge of self versus true knowledge of self. We're going to look at hip hop culture because myself and Dwayne came up in hip hop culture. We valued it. We thought it was the, 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 the most important thing on the planet to represent and to, to demonstrate and to exemplify. And uh, we're going to talk about that. So I want to encourage you to join us again in our next episode. And I also want you to always remember, as it is written in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6, it is the Lord that gives wisdom and out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. I can't wait to see you again. And as we uh, continue next time, we want you to be enriched and obtain a true knowledge of self. <laughs>